Welcome to Appalach Baptist Church. We got some folks visiting today that hadn't been here in a long time, but was here for almost 20 years. Where'd he go? There he is right back there. Mr. Crow led music here for almost 20 years. Welcome uh, to Appalach. And then we got uh, Mr. David Hill back here on the back pew. Welcome to Appalach. And I got some kin people here. We live across the railroad track from each other now, and we still don't see each other. But uh, my uh, family that uh, on my grandmother's side is here this morning. Welcome to Appalach. It's good to have you all with us this morning. So anybody visiting with us, welcome. We got a visitor's bag back the back for you when you leave the service this morning. So stop by there and, and get you a visitor's bag as you leave. If you got your Bibles this morning, turn to Ruth, Ruth chapter 4. As I begin to pray and to seek the Lord how to finish this year out, I've been trying to preach this message since I got to Appalach, and the Lord hadn't given me liberty to. And uh, as I was praying how to finish the year out, he, he let me give me liberty to preach the sermon I'm going to preach this morning. And uh, we uh, re- redid it some to fit the occasion for what we've been through as a church, what we've been through as a, as a nation. So uh, if you got your place in Ruth chapter 4, if you would stand uh, for the reading of God's word. Again, reading in verse 1. And then went, Boaz, when, then went Boaz up to the gate and set him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by. Unto whom he said, Ho, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise to thee, saying, Buy it before, it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people, If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is one to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it. Also of Ruth the Moabite, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabite. It's the wife of the dead. And to raise up the name of the dead unto the inheritance. And the kinsman said, get this, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Father, we pray that you bless the reading of your word. Lord, we pray for your anointing. Lord, we pray that you would help us this morning as we preach. Lord, we pray that the words, Lord, won't fall on deaf ears, but, God, that you would touch our hearts, and, Lord, that we would, Lord, be moved to respond to your calling. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would receive praise, honor, and glory for everything that's done. And we'd be careful to thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. I didn't read the whole chapter this morning because I'm going to preach the whole book of Ruth in 20 minutes, okay? And uh, we're going to get this done, and I love the book of Ruth. It's probably my favorite book in the Bible. And as we preach the book of Ruth, I, I, I have brought something with me today, and I don't recommend ter- touching it. It's, it's old, and it's a shoe. It's my, Jerry, it's my work shoe. You want to hold it? <laughs> oh, he's funny. That's my, that's my work shoe. It's my old shoe, and I brought it with me this morning. And uh, you may be wondering why I brought an old, nasty, dirty work shoe to the pulpit with me, and and I'll tell you later, but before we get to the old shoe, I, I want to bring, up, bring us up to chapter 4 so that we'll know what's going on uh, when we get to chapter 4. If we go back to the beginning of the book of Ruth, we, we find a man by the name of Elimelech. Uh, we find him, and he's married to a woman by the name of Naomi. They live in Bethlehem, Judea. Now get this, this is important. Bethlehem, Judea is is the place, uh, the house of bread and praise. 
But there was a famine that came up in the land. It came up in the land, and during that famine, I don't know if it was Elimelech or Naomi's idea, but either way, they decided that they were going to leave uh, the uh, 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 they were going to leave Bethlehem, and they decided that they were going to take a little trip uh, to uh, to Moab. They were going to journey uh, down to Moab. The Bible tells us that his name was Elimelech. His name means, get this, my God is king. My God is king. There was a day when he knew that God was a king, but they went down to the land of Moab. The land, the word Moab means which father or who is father. So they left a place, get this, where they knew who God was and went down to a place where nobody was sure of who God was. And they went down there, the Bible says, they went down there to sojourn. They went down there to stay on a little trip, a little short trip down the Moab. The Bible said that they were going on a short trip to spend a little time there and, and, and be, as always the case, or almost always the case, it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. When we get out of God's will and we leave the place that God's got us, it'll keep us longer than we intended to stay. So they went down there. Guess what happens? Elimelech dies while they're in Moab. Elimelech dies. He never made it back to the land of promise. He never made it back into the will of God. These two sons, they had two sons. Their name were Malon and Shilion. They married them women of Moab. They never had any intentions of ever coming back to Bethlehem. They never had any intentions on living for God and, and serving God. Can I throw this in right here? Hey, Mom, Dad, listen. If you get out of the will of God, it's going to cost, it's going to be at the expense of your children. It's not just about you. It's about them as well. This mom and dad was out of the will of God. They go down to Moab. When they get to Moab, the husband dies. Listen, it's just, you, you better stay with God. You better walk with God and think about the consequences uh, that are associated with getting out of the will of God. Well, these two boys married them girls down in Moab. And it's interesting, the Bible says in Ruth chapter 1 that Malon and Shilion both died and it's almost as though they both died at the same time, possibly under the judgment of God. So what we have left now are three widows. We have Naomi, we have Ruth, and we have Orpah. Well, Naomi hears a message back in chapter 1, verse 6, that, that she heard that the Lord had visited his people and that he had given them bread. So I entitled the title of the message today, From Famine to Fabulous, because there was a famine in the land, and they went down to Moab, and things uh, got worse. I like this little message here in Ruth. He, the messenger that said that the Lord had visited his people was basically telling them that there was a Lord, and the Lord had visited his people in Bethlehem, and that the Lord was Lord in Bethlehem, and he was Lord in Moab. Amen? He's Lord no matter where we're at. And he told them that he had a peculiar people. He had these people in Bethlehem, Judea, and he visited these people. And I'm glad that the Lord has a habit of coming by and visiting his people. Amen. Several months, maybe a month ago, the Lord dropped by Appalach, and he revealed himself to us in a mighty moving of the Spirit. And I'm glad that he drops by and he visits his people. And when he visits his people, he's in a habit of bringing them gifts. He brings by the bread. And she heard the testimony that the Bible says that she got up and she gathered them things together and she gathered her two daughter-in-laws and they headed back to the land of promise. Somewhere along the way, Oprah kissed her mother-in-law and decided that she was going to return back to her people and to their gods. But Ruth stayed with Naomi. 
Naomi tried her best to talk Ruth out of going with her and coming back with her. She said, listen, I'm too old. I don't have a husband. If I did have a husband, I couldn't have children. And if I did have children, you can't wait till they're grown and marry them. You might as well go back home and, and go back to your people. But she had made her mind up that she was going with her mother-in-law. In 2022, church, we need to make our mind up that we're going with the Lord. Amen. No matter what comes, no matter what comes our way, we need to be assured and make our mind up that we're going to cling to the Lord. The Bible says that they came back to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley, barley harvest. And by the way, do you know what happened during the barley harvest at the beginning of barley harvest? <clears throat> That's when they went out and they got the sheaves and they waved them before the Lord as a wave offering and when they waved it before the Lord it meant at least two things it meant there's more in the field which uh, that came from and it's just like this it's, it's the first fruits of, of the labor Paul said in the New Testament that Jesus is the first fruits which, uh, of them which sleep you know what that means? <laughs> There's more in the grave where he came from. It means that Jesus is the first of the resurrection, and there's more to come, amen. When he steps out on the cloud, he's going to call the church home, amen. There's the first fruits of the field, he says. There's more where that came from, and they're going to be raised up, and they're going to be just like him. Then we come to chapter 2. Chapter 2, they, they come back, and the Bible says that, that Ruth said to Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn, after which in whose sight I shall found grace. And Naomi said, Go, my daughter. And the Bible says that her hap was to light on the part of the field of Boaz. Now, Boaz is the near kin, is, a, is one of the near kin to Naomi. But there's a law in the book of Deuteronomy. And the law says that the kinsman redeemer, where, where if the brethren dwell together and one of them die, leaving no son, his brother is to go into his wife and, and raise up a seed that the name of the dead shall not be cut off from his generation. So Boaz can do the part of the kinsman. Boaz can do that part. And it's, I like this. Ruth is out working in the field. She's out there working in the field gleaning, and she catches the eye of Boaz. And he, he says something that's very interesting to me. He says this, whose damsel is this? Whose damsel is this? He didn't say, who is she? But he said, whose is she? It's not important who you are, it's important whose you are. It's not so important what your name is, but, but who you belong to. Amen? He says, who does this little girl belong to? That said that this Moabite girl, they said to him, that's that Moabite girl. Let me throw this in right here five times in the book of Ruth. She is officially mentioned. She's officially introduced to a group of people. Five separate occasions she's introduced. And four of those times is right here in the book of Ruth. And every time she's introduced officially to a group of people, it's Ruth the Moabite, that woman of Moab, that Moabite damsel. It's always got that Moabite tag to, tag to it. But the fifth time that she's introduced is in Matthew chapter 1. This ought to make you stomp your feet and get excited. That Moabite tag is gone. It's just Ruth. Amen. She's introduced as Ruth. You know why? Because it's after the wedding. It's after the wedding. And after the wedding, that Moabite tag is gone. Moabite is that old flesh. It's that old sin nature. Hallelujah. And after the wedding, that old flesh is gone. It's gone forever. Ruth comes home and, and she has such a so much grain. That her mother-in-law says to her, where have you been gleaning today? And who did take knowledge of thee? And she begins to tell her about Boaz. Then we come to chapter 3. 
Chapter 3, Naomi said, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? Is not Boaz in the threshing floor withering the barley? And here's what I want you to do. I want you to go down and I want you to put your raiment on. I believe that might have been her wedding garment. I want you to go down there and put your uh, raiment on. I want you to go down to the floor and hide thyself and don't let Boaz know you there. So she got down there and she got her a good vantage point. She got her a good place to hide and she was could see Boaz and when he laid down and on the heap of corn and, and his heart was merry and his work was finished she came and she laid down at his feet and at midnight he woke up and there was a woman laying at his feet and he asked her who, who she was and she said I'm Ruth the Moabitess spread thy skirt over thine handmaid for thou art a near kinsman in modern day language, I believe this is what it said. Will you marry me? He said, I will. I'll marry you. But there's a problem. And here's what the problem is. There's a kinsman that's nearer than me. There's a kinsman that has first choice. He's got first dibs on you. He said to her, now, hang on. Let me give, give me your veil, and I'm going to fill it up with grain. You go down to your mother-in-law, and, and you go home, and you wait. And, and she went home, and I like what her mother-in-law said. She said, sit still, my daughter. Let me just pause right here for a second, church, and say, sit still. Amen. Don't quit working, but just sit still. We don't know what's coming. We don't know what 22 holds. But can I just say, sit still and wait on the Lord. Go down to your mother-in-law's house and, and just sit still and, and rest until his work is finished. He won't rest until his work is finished. This day is what Ruth, Naomi tells Ruth. And then we come to chapter 4. Chapter 4, Boaz calls the elders in and, and he calls the near kinsmen in and he, and he says to the Naomi that, that comes out of Moabite, he says to them, Naomi the, that comes out of Moab selleth a partial of land. That was our brother's Elimelech and I thought to advertise unto thee that you get first choice. It's, it's your choice. And that fella thought about it for a minute that near kinsman thought about it, and he said, he said that, that he wanted that land that belonged to his brother Elimelech. He said, man, I want that land. Man, that land looks good. I'll take it. Boaz said, hold on a second. He said, the day that you take that land off the hand of Naomi, thou must also uh, from the hand of Ruth of Moabite is to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. He said, you can buy the land, but you also got to marry Ruth. We read it. You know what he said? I'm not interested. When he found out that he had to marry Ruth, he said, I want the land, but I don't want that Moabite girl. She is, hear this, she is worthless to me. It's going to hurt my inheritance if I marry that girl. So Boaz said, all right, I'll take her. Well, glory. I'm glad there was a Boaz that said, I'll take him. Boaz said, well, okay. He says, you don't want her. How are we going to prove it? The Bible says in the Old Testament passage about the near kinsman, if, if he would not do the part of the kinsman, then the woman that had refused, uh, that was refused was to take off his shoe, off his foot, and spit in his face. And he was be known as the barefoot man in Israel, the house of him that has loosed his, has his shoe loosed. Ruth didn't, we don't read that Ruth spit in his face. The near kinsman took off his old shoe. One who wouldn't purchase Ruth took off his shoe. Boaz. But 
token that she's mine. That's my